Okay, here's another question from Sheila. What are your thoughts on ortho K fitting with low sphere and high sill? So um, looking at the left eye, Plano minus one axis 180. If we were to read John Mountford's textbooks or listen to John in lecture, he will usually tell us that you want double the sphere than sill. You want twice the sphere versus the sill. That's a, a more optimal patient. When they're closer to each other, that's going to be a little harder to control. So great question from Sheila. What do we do about these patients that uh, might be in some kind of myopia control because one of the eyes is certainly myopic. Um, the fellow eye could be on the path of being my myopic. It could be a premature emetrope, a very young emetrope, and therefore this patient is already on the myopia path. So what do we do? Um, tough case for sure. The first question is, can we use a toric landing? And this is important because we may need the lens to stay on a specific axis in order to manipulate one meridian more than the other. So here in this eye, we go back to that sag differential. It's 34 microns of height difference. So in other words, on this with the rule eye, the steep meridian is 34 microns deeper we can therefore create a toric. Remember, anybody 30 microns or greater, you can generally fit a toric and have improved landing, improved alignment, improved centration, comfort, all those things. Now, if we were to fit this patient with a symmetric landing, a non-toric lens, and build our, our lens to create a small half diopter effect, remember that our sphere is plano, our sill is minus one, um, so we don't want to take the patient too far into the plus by pushing too much effect across the flat meridian. So you'd have a very subtle reservoir, almost nothing. So from center to periphery, very little uh, hydraulic force being created across the flat meridian. Across the steep meridian, we're going to need a fair amount of effect because we need to um, eliminate that minus one plus maybe a little bit of overshoot. But using a symmetric lens on this toric eye is going to give you a pretty poor relationship across the steep axis. Too much fluid at 12 o'clock, way too much fluid at six o'clock. The lens is undoubtedly not going to want to center. Um, we're really not going to get a very good outcome. The patient's probably going to be uncomfortable as well. So let's go back to the drawing board and build a toric, um, a toric landing so that, again, across the flat meridian where we don't need much effect, we're going to have this very subtle oblate type shape, uh, thinner in the center, thicker toward the periphery to create maybe a half diopter. In the steep axis, we want that lens to land down and trap that fluid layer 360 degrees around, have a healthy reservoir all the way around, have better centration, better alignment, better comfort. Um, but if this fluid layer isn't enough to push some of that cylinder out of the way, then we might need a toric base curve as well. So I would try this first because this is a, a simpler lens. We're going to push just a little bit of myopic reduction. Um, we're going to take our, our spherical patient, push them a little bit into the plus, maybe plus 50. The fact that our base curve will be flatter than the steep meridian, that might give us a little bit of shift in the astigmatism. We might be able to flatten out the, the steep axis essentially. Now, if that doesn't work, we may need to go to a dual zone toric, meaning we have a toric alignment, but we also have a toric base curve that we talked about in that earlier question. So across the flat meridian, we're going to create very little hydraulic force because, of course, we're plano. Um, but along the steep axis, we're going to use an even flatter radius. So one radius of base curve this way, a completely different radius of base curve vertically. And that's to try to squeeze out more hydraulic force, create a customized hydraulic force across two different meridians. So there are some things that we can try for these astigmatic eyes. 
pretty tricky, I will say. I feel like the hardest patient um, to fit in um, ortho K, or at least, at least the least predictive in ortho K, is what we do for the stigmatic meridian and whether we can move it and control it in a desirable fashion. Um, it, in other words, I think we're able to manipulate the myopia um, much easier in ortho K, but astigmatism is less predictive. Sometimes we can do it, sometimes we um, leave half of it there, sometimes we leave 100% of it there, sometimes we even increase it, like in. Um, in that case that we evaluated earlier.